guys and welcome to a very special edition of Displaying Model Behavior. This is going to be part of a joint project that I am doing with Ash over at Super Sorrel's YouTube channel. What we're going to do is I am going to list my top 50 Marvel Legends of all time and the following couple of days on Friday I do believe Ash is going to put out his video his top 50 of all time and then the following Monday we are going to do a live stream together where he brings his list I bring mine and we thrash out between us what is the definitive top 50 list of Marvel Legends and I hope that Ash has a lot of figures that are the same as mine, because if he doesn't, then he is gonna be sobbing into his cereal when I have to boot out his favorite Marvel Legends to make way for my elite top 50. Now, before we start, a couple of provisos, some pauses for thought, some quid pro quos. First of all, we are not including any toy biz or early, early Hasbro. Kind of the cutoff line we sort of decided between ourselves is the Return of Marvel Legends line onwards. So kind of 2015 onwards. And also everything else is carte blanche. So builder figures, deluxe figures, exclusives, you name it. If it's a Marvel Legend, then it's fair game to make my top 50 list. What figures are on those lists? Well, we're gonna find out right now. Number 50. Now, I love evil doppelgangers, and they don't get more, much more evil than Dark Beast. This takes everything that was great about the original Beast and just turns it up to 11 with so much more detailing. First of all, you've got the great shiny metallic metal pants going on there. Don't really know what that sort of, you know, works or how that, how that works in a sort of a realistic kind of way, but hey, they're metal pants and they look good to me. Then, of course, one problem a lot of people had with the Blue Beast is his angry looking face but with this one this captures the dark beast expression so well but then you've also got the extra details like the braids you've got the earrings as well there's so much more going on that just works fantastically he has the different hands as well so you can have him standing up on, on his hand if you want to but really just this wonderful evil maniacal looking character here with the huge big hair all the attention to detail, it's just wonderful. I absolutely love this guy. Number 49. Cyborg Spider-Man, a figure that I think, you know, no one was really expecting. And then it was announced and uh, I was like, oh, it seems like a kind of a lazy sort of thing for them to do. And then I got him in hand and I just fell in love with this. As soon as we got this figure on the retro Spidey body, I was like, Yep, now we need a 90s Spider-Man. Just remove all the extras and you have a classic 90s Spider-Man with the brighter blue, the bigger spider, the wider eyes. I'm sure we're going to get it soon. In the meantime, though, we have this, which has so much more going on. It's so much fun. Just a random comic book look that lasted for about an issue and a half. But what a great, unique sort of style. Cyborg Spider-Man. Just for those who are not in the know, like, he's not really a cyborg this is like a cast that went over his his arm when he hurt his arm and then this was just added to you know help him out in battle but yeah this is so much fun really really cool i absolutely love this figure what a random inclusion but ah a highlight of the shelf although i gotta say still hasbro not being able to match up the paint colors with the joints such a shame but besides that awesome figure Number 48. From the Age of Apocalypse, Sunfire. This might not be one that you would expect to see on a top 50, but look at this guy. Just look at how pretty he is. It is crazy with the flames licking up around his face, coming off of his kind of a chest piece there. The beautiful sort of Land of the Rising Sun face mask. I think this is just such a badass design. So, so cool with the black kind of armor there as well, making a sort of a distinct pattern against the translucent yellow flames. This figure is absolutely gorgeous. Not much in the way of accessories but you see the nice flame details on the hands as well, licking up the back of his head like crazy flame hair. What an amazing figure this is. Number 47. Sorry, 
here now we have Juggernaut Two Pack Colossus. I mean, what do I have to say about this figure that isn't obvious already? My goodness, he's big. He's so, such a big buck, and I'm so happy that they're starting to use this buck more. I think, I think, from what I understand, we're gonna get the oh, what was it, Sabertooth, AOA Sabertooth on here. But look, he comes with the clawing hands and the fisted hands as well, plus the bright, shiny metallic paint job with the line work there as well. They just capture Peter Rasputin so perfectly. The nice, clean, bright yellow and red paint job, big, chunky X belt buckle. This guy really is worth the price of admission. Adding him to the huge, big juggernaut he comes with as well, what an amazing two-pack. Number 46. The name's Gambit. I just dropped my staff. That's the only problem with this character and I'm still gonna stand by him as a top 50 inclusion. The retro release just took the original, which was universally considered a great figure and just tweaked it just enough. They gave him a different head of hair that wasn't as divisive. He's still got the great gambit smirk. They added some detail to the playing cards as well. Now you've got this great, more animated sort of look. He's got the blue type uh, hand gloves there that just make him brighter and stand out more. Some people prefer the darker trench coat. Me personally, I really like this one. Along with the bright pink detailing on the side of the legs as well. This is just pure 90s cartoon nostalgia. Add in the little bow staff too. Plus the other hand that has the the flaying splaying cards even though like physics wise that doesn't really work but still this is a great great action figure number 45 the name's cable and from the future yep and in the future i bet they have badass action figures because this guy was kind of ahead of his time i feel when marvel legends do have a propensity for reusing a lot of stuff there is so much original sculpt on this character the big chunky shoulder pads with the bullets and all the detailing i absolutely love and adore the telekinetic glow coming off of his eye that's so badass with the teeth painted there and sculpted as well, the scarring on his face, just so much cool, cool stuff going on with this character. I think that's like the, the Hasbro sort of license number there, but it actually kind of works with his military kind of style. Plus you've got this huge big gun here. You've got the other sort of uh, shotgun pistol in his holster there, along with this fella to have in the hand. It's just such a great, great figure. So much going on, quite underrated I feel, and just an absolute highlight of the X-Men line. Number 44. One of the most definitive Marvel Legends characters and designs is Pizza Spider-Man. Done so many times, but why not? Because I think this captures the Spider-Man physique so, so well. This slim but muscular, I always say like, like a swimmer's kind of physique, where you can tell there's a lot of power there, but he's very, very lean and, in this case, very, very spidery. Now, of course, it's all the extras you get with this figure as well. You have the mask being halfway up with the smile, the cheeky Peter Parker smile with the, the slice of pizza he can eat, plus six different hands. Three, three different types of hands that you can have on there for all sorts of combinations. Lots of articulation possibilities. Only downside, of course, is you've still got the red pins in the arms, which is such a shame. And I can't believe they didn't fix it with the retro Spider-Man, but there you go. But yeah, there is a lot to love about this figure. Does it show its age? Yes, it does. Is it bonkers that they haven't made the new 2099 on the retro body and they've just gone back to this one? Yes, it also is. But still, as a figure, as a definitive Spider-Man, this guy still stands the test of time. Absolutely class act of an action figure. Number 43. Now they don't come bigger or more gruesome than the Sugar Man. Look at the state of this guy. I mean, 
hideous, absolutely hideous, but also wonderful. Now look, there are pros and cons with this. The main one being that he's kind of a statue, really. It's almost McFarlane-ish that you can move the hands and the arms, but that's really it. If you see Sugar Man on anyone's display, he's gonna be looking pretty much the same because there's not much else you can do with him. But in fairness, what would you do? You know, this is what he is supposed to look like and he looks great and just look. Look at all the detail in the mouth, the horrible, gnarly tongue. I think that looks so great. The wonderful shading around the eyes there, the different colors on the, bu on the buttons and the buckles. There's so much to love on this figure. They could have gone a little bit harder with some of the paintwork to maybe bring out some more details, but still we've got some nice washes on the back that give that gross hairy look. And then each one of his hands has the gnarly claws and you've got the, the wrist uh, buckle there and the ring too. So lots of detail going on his big sugar mallet, sugar man. Uh, oh, and of course I added a custom tattoo from uh, Aroha Tattoo Decals because that was a big missing point actually, which puts him down a little bit, was that he was missing that very obvious bit of extra work. So a bit of a shame there, but that doesn't take away from the incredible detail in this builder figure. Number 42. You're a good girl, but me, my magic. I know that he probably shouldn't have an Irish accent. That was just Colin Farrell. Isn't Bullseye sort of American? Who knows? Who even cares? Because this figure is so cool with the removable knife at the back here. He has two heads, which of course are better than one. And of course the screaming bald head I have on my Dark Avengers Hawkeye. But look at the evil grin there. The missing tooth I think adds so much character. This is a perfect example of a facial expression that is not the boring stoic look, but isn't like too sort of screaming either. It's just putting over a lot of character. I love his little finger bang there as well, the gun sort of motion. Got his little pistol there too. And of course he has the whoosh, the throwing hand as well. I think it's just such a great figure. This was a bit of a grail for a long time and okay, maybe I didn't use grail term properly, but still he was very hard to get for a decent price, all right? And then I got him for a reasonable price. <laughs> so I wasn't mad, but yeah, I love Bullseye. Such a great character, such a great figure. Awesome. Number 41. Mutant target acquired. That's a terrible Nimrod voice, but still, here is Nimrod. And look, I gotta give props to the fact that this character is completely original, fresh design. And that's something that's kind of rare with Hasbro, to have a completely unique design for a sculpt, for a character. And this is the modern Nimrod, which I think just looks really cool. I love how big and blocky and chunky he is. Plus we've got the translucent effect here, the blast effect, which is really pretty, along with the kind of dragonfly on the back as well. I'm not collecting modern X-Men, but still I will have him in this look, in this guise, because it's just such a cool kind of figure. Now look, articulation is almost zero. The torso swivel doesn't really want to swivel, the head doesn't move. You've got the arms at least, but they don't really go very far and similar with the legs but I don't even care. Because also Nimrod in the comics and in the cartoon, when you see him, he is just like a brick that just floats along kind of menacingly. So that sort of works with all that considered. I think that, yeah, he's a really fun character. So unique, stands out like a bright white and pink thumb on your shelf. I'm a big fan of Nimrod. Number 40. Warren Worthington III, Archangel, a deluxe figure, and so deluxe he is. Absolutely beautiful with these wings that are articulated as well. So you can have the big wide wingspan or you can fold them up. I love that he has the smaller ones on the back as well, which is kind of, I always thought, a staple of his design, that he's got kind of the, the double wings. Then you have three different heads to choose from. I've gone for, or is it four different heads even? So I've gone for the more sort of neutral kind of look here. Now, this figure is not without its flaws as well. It would be nice to have different hands too. But again, when you've got so many accessories with the huge big wings and the head, I will allow that. Now, 
the costume design, I would much prefer the blue with the white and the halo in the middle, but hey, maybe we'll get that one of these days. In the meantime though, the kind of just recently recovered from being a four horseman type Archangel, I think is an incredible figure, really beautiful, a centerpiece for an X-Men team and absolutely worthy. Worthy Warren Worthington, <laughs> that's a mouthful. He's very much worthy of being on the top 50. Number 39. And probably one of the least favorite X-Men characters from the 90s cartoon, we have Jubilee. But they really went the extra mile with the figure. I really love this. The fact she has two different heads. One with the bubblegum, one without. But come on, why would you not have this awesome bubblegum head? With the glasses that are actually see-through, which you know, really makes me annoyed when we have glasses and face panels and masks that are not see-through. It's like, look, you can do it. And look how good that looks. You can actually see the face through there. Such a huge, huge kind of difference that sets her apart. She doesn't have any sort of uh, blast effects, which is a shame because that's, you know, her whole power is making the fireworks and stuff. So that would have been fun. But still, we've got this bright yellow canary trench coat that makes her stand out with the pink top and the little jean shorts there straight out of a mall in the 90s. Not, <laughs> not that I remember seeing anyone with these kind of like bright blue washing up gloves in a mall in the 90s. But hey, you know, it's the X-Men comics. It's okay. She's got the little insignia there as well. The X-Men earrings. There's so much going on with this character. For a figure that, you know, is kind of a minor character in the grand scheme of things, I think they really push the boat out and I love this little Jubilee. Number 38. Sure to become a big money player in the MCU in the next year or two, we have Moon Knight, about to be portrayed by Oscar Isaacs. And this figure, oh me mia. Yes, he is a basic kind of repaint of, is it, is it the Sunfire mold? I don't know. Either way though, it's beautiful in its simplicity. You've got the white with the lovely pearlescent kind of uh, belt and the moon added there. Just, I could gush over this figure for ages. Plus you've got the black head as well. You can put in there for that kind of classic comic book effect. You've got the little sickles that look so badass and his knuckles like Batman Batarangs. I mean, let's face it, he is kind of the the white version of, ba actually, you know what people say is the white version of Batman, but that's really not fair to say because his character is so much more complex than just being a Batman ripoff. But still, visually, you, you get that imagery, but like a white version. Anyway, I digress. People don't like the plastic cape. I don't mind it in the slightest because I normally have him in a flight stand. So he's sort of swooping in like, like this. So that works really well. But just, yeah, I'm already lingering over this fig figure longer than most others because look at the little moon details here as well. There is so much to love about Moon Knight with the sort of the stitching kind of look where his, his hood joins at the back there with kind of the gray wash as well, bringing out the details. Ah, such a cool figure. Number 37. Now you've got to have Wolverine appear somewhere and I have the Love Triangle 3-pack Wolverine. Now, okay, bit of a fudge here because I'm using the other head from the brown costume Wolverine, but I just happen to have that one on here at the time and that doesn't take away from the points I want to make, which is Bone Claw Wolverine is just pure 90s nostalgia. So that, that hits the nostalgia bone hard for me. Plus, I love the down, the down cowl, which we do get with the three pack. And the other heads that do come with the three pack, I think are excellent. You've got the shorter hair smirking look, which I think is kind of fun. Then you've got what's really great is the battle ravaged look, which, okay, granted it would help if I kind of showed it here, but this is the way that I choose to display 90s Wolverine. And I think it works so, so well. So I won't bang on about the head because that's not part of the actual figure as it comes. But still, you've got the big 90s shoulder pads. You've got those wonderful bone claws. Not from bone claws, they can look really sort of like stubby and, and like rounded and not deadly. These actually look quite menacing, like he's really gonna mess someone up with those. So as a wonderful little time capsule from the 90s, the Love Triangle 3-pack Logan absolutely nails it. Number 36. And of course now we have Captain Deadpool, the Rob Liefeld anniversary. Is it the 25th anniversary design? I think this is 
great. Just so bright and bold, straight out of the 90s X-Force comics. I think this is kind of the quintessential Deadpool. I mean, let's face it, we have a lot of Deadpool figures, but this is the most kind of classic to capture everything that the character originally was. He's got the wonderful shiny kind of black, kind of a gunmetal sort of black, so it's not too flat. His accessories are removable, so you've got the swords in the back there. The guns are okay. I like the fact that we have realistic sort of guns. We've got this uh, pistol sort of machine gun here, and you've got the big grenade launcher, but I actually really don't like this grenade launcher because it's so thin. It, like, like from the side, it looks great. And then you kind of turn it like that. It's like, oh, where did it go? And it's very kind of rubbery. So that's not great, but I won't let that take away from the character because everything else with the belt buckles design going on here it really is awesome he's got the great grimace look on his face there with the expression i really really dig this deadpool and i'm not a huge deadpool fan but to go in an x-force 90s display this guy is terrific number 35 we're not so different you and i Look at the Green Goblin, the retro Green Goblin. Ah, oh, talk about nailing a figure. Absolutely wonderful. Yes, I know some people don't like the big eye pupils, but I think they add so much character to it. Really, really great. Uh, I did a couple of little additions on here, putting the uh, explosion effect, the blast effect on the back of the glider and his little finger blast there as well. But that notwithstanding, even without those, look at the Green Goblin face. That is just so cool with the gigantic chin and the huge ears. Talk about classic, classic Spider-Man. I adore this so, so much. The glider is basic, but it's all it needs to be. That's what the Goblin Glider looks like. He's got his man purse there. He's got the pumpkin bomb. And of course, he has a different head as well. He has the Norman Osborn head. And with a suit body, there's so many different things you can do with that. Also, it comes with the cowl as well, so that you can have the Norman head on there with the cowl around his neck. So it looks like he has just kind of dropped the mask. Such a nice addition. Then you've got the great scale and everything as well. Absolutely fantastic figure. Love, love the Green Goblin. Number 34. Welcome to the apocalypse. Apocalypse, the builder figure. Now the real question for me was, do we go for builder figure apocalypse or age of apocalypse apocalypse? Can I say apocalypse one more time? Apocalypse. And the reason I went for the builder figure was because the age of apocalypse one with his plastic cape and the big shoulder pads, they tend to like lift off and kind of fall apart a bit. Whereas this guy holds his pose a lot better and what a pose it is. He's big and imposing. Can I say pose one more time? No, I'm not gonna do that gimmick again. But still, look at the face here. This, this is Apocalypse. <laughs> this is not the Oscar Isaac Apocalypse. This is not Ivan Ooze. This is comic book Apocalypse. And he looks so badass. Would I like him to be bigger? Of course I would, because I'm just greedy. But I think he, he actually is like perfectly proportioned with the rest of the, of the cast and crew of the X-Men because let's face it, he's a shapeshifter. He can be as big or as small as he wants. And the fact you have this awesome uh, claw clamp hand as well, that if you want to, if you're a photographer, you can put other characters in there, have them fighting. I think he looks absolutely great. Love this design. And actually it was this figure that I wanted that got me into collecting the X-Men. Cause I was like, oh, he looks so cool. I will just get Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, right. A great addition to the top 50. Number 33. The Lizard, ladies and gentlemen, another Builder figure and what a Builder figure it is. Now, first of all, the gripes, people hate the tail with the joints in it. I actually really like that because you can bend it any way you want and it doesn't get in the way. There's a reason why the Sauron Baff isn't on this list because he has a solid tail and it takes up so much space. Whereas this guy, you can use this to stand him up really well as a balance because he has the wonderful sort of double or triple jointed lizard feet, which means that it's a great pose, but it's difficult to get him to stand unless you use this right. So I think that's terrific. Also, people don't like the Jurassic Park dino lizard head. 
I love this head. I think it looks so cool. I love Dino Lizard with his big tongue as well. Like, he looks like a reptile. He looks like a man who has turned into a lizard. Go figure. I just think this is fantastic. Because when, when the face is more sort of stubby, he looks too much like a Koopa Trooper from the 90s Mario Brothers movie. No one wants that. But this guy is fantastic. He's big as well. He's really, really huge. I mean, we compare him next to Pizza Spider-Man and like, this is a real menacing looking foe. You got the radioactive special claws, great detailing on here. I would like it if his coat was a bit mankier, but we've got the nice sort of coffee staining on there. So there's still so much great stuff. I think this is one of the most underrated Builder figures. Absolutely love him. Number 32. The Menace of Mysterio. People can say this is just a lazy repaint, but oh my goodness, what a pretty repaint it is. Please excuse the magic effects. Those didn't come with him, but it's a nice little kit bash, isn't it? Pure Mysterio. But I just love, when I had the original Mysterio, I was thinking if only he had more gold on him, those classic colors. And lo and behold, they did it. And they spruced him up too with the nice change with the sort of teal, is that kind of turquoisey looking smoke effects around his legs. I think this is so striking on the shelf. I absolutely love this guy. He has the different uh, translucent head in there as well. So you have the Quentin Beck translucent head, which is great for different sort of posing options with the gold gloves that just offset themselves against the body, which isn't just a flat green, but actually has like a nicer kind of highlighted, almost yellowy kind of tone to it. Then, then with the deeper, darker wash, there's so much more going on with this figure. The great kind of tentacly smoke effects there. I absolutely love Mysterio. He's a repaint, but my goodness, he is a gorgeous repaint. Number 31. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kingpin of Crime. What a beautiful deluxe figure this is. Not just a repaint, but with some extra sculpting as well for the cravat. We have a different head that's all kind of battle damaged and beaten up. This is exactly what I wanted when I was looking at the Builder figure. And I thought, well, that's a great modern look, but where are the purple pants? Where's the color? Where's the orange? And it's like Hasbro heard me and they said, oh, don't worry, we'll charge you for that. And I'm glad they did because this is my definitive retro kingpin. Look at the little detail, the little, little vein in the forehead. When Hasbro go the extra mile with their sculpting, they really, really nail it. Even like, I can you even see like the, the knuckles there, the, they, they really have put a lot of more effort into here. A little bit of gold on the buttons would have been quite nice, but I will allow that because everything else here, I can see like the texture of his shoes, like kind of a crocodile leather, I think is really, really great. Just a wonderful big heavy too. There's some heft to this figure. The heftometer is, is ranking very highly here with the lovely diamond in the cane as well. This is just a an absolute centerpiece type figure for any great retro Spider-Man collection. Number 30. And now to enter the Spider-Verse with Spider-Punk. And this is actually quite a basic figure to have on the list, but it works so nicely. I have the different guitar, the Deadpool guitar on here, because it's a bit more colorful, a bit more fun. But just, I love the amount of detail on his denim punk rock jacket here. I think that works so, so well. And they've got the different texture for the denim too. Then you've got the spikes and the little uh, badges on there. The spikes, the punk rock spikes on his head. So much little bits of detail that works so, so well. You can see he's actually holding the, the guitar plectrum. That's just brilliant, I think. Then you got the devil horns as well. It would be so easy to do a lazy thwipping hand, which we know Hasbro love to do, but actually they decided to tuck the thumb in and make it proper devil horns. God bless you for that. Then you got the, the quite cool spider punk sort of spider design there. I really like this figure. It doesn't really come with many extras, but I didn't even mention he's got the kicks as well. I think they just took the spider punk design and they managed to recreate it brilliantly. Still has those 
red dots on the elbows, which kind of sucks, but I can look past that to what is a really great figure. Number 29. What many are calling the quintessential Spider-Man now, the retro carded Spider-Man. And talking about an upgrade, I keep saying talking about, even though I haven't been talking about something. Let's talk about an upgrade to the Pizza Spidey mold. And it's debatable. I really had this one grow on me. I wasn't a huge fan at first because I liked the pizza one so much. But then the slightly thicker body makes Spidey look more imposing. He's got the torso swivel as opposed to the crunch, which I think works really, really well. And the only thing that kind of draws back for this figure a little bit for me is that even though he comes with an extra head, which I love. They're really similar to each other. It's just that the eyes are slightly different. What I really, really want is a 90s version of this, which essentially just means bigger eyes and brighter colors. And I'm sure we will get that because that would be such an easy fix for Hasbro to do. But in the meantime, for a retro Spider-Man, this works brilliantly. Nothing too flashy, nothing too clever. Nice, clean lines, big design, bright, good stuff. This is a great Spider-Man. Number 28. Let's go to Alice in Wonderland with the White Rabbit. Is this a bit of a surprise to, to see on the list? Maybe it is, but I mean, come on, this is just such a cool, unusual figure. They really hit on something good with this. So first of all, like I, I love the White Rabbit face. They actually managed to make, dare I say, like kind of a beautiful face, which is unusual for <laughs> Hasbro where they will often kind of look like just, just, just dead-eyed mannequins. But I think maybe because it's all dolled up with the White Rabbit makeup, it works a lot better. Then with the ears, they actually gave some fur type texture to the back of the ears. And look at the lovely kind of paint coloring detail on the hair. They, again, they went a little bit further, a little bit harder than they needed to. And it paid off beautifully, even Again, I love doing these videos because I see things in the reflection of the phone that I normally wouldn't. The actual texture on the coat itself, they've put in a lot more effort than they possibly needed to. Then you got the fun kind of corset look, which I think has been used for Emma Frost and I know for Typhoid Mary as well. You got the, the white rabbit clock there too and the big fluffy boots. Also, the umbrella has a blast effect, which I took and I put on the Green Goblin. Because also, like, the face is good, but it doesn't exactly say I'm firing weapons in a fight right now. It says I'm standing casually with my umbrella, which is what she's doing, and she looks great while she's doing it. Number 27. An unexpected one for the list, maybe. We have Radioactive Man, but look at this guy. He's positively glowing in my hand. Like, how cool is that? For a figure that kind of captures the character's power so well, you can't do better than this guy. He looks like he is literally radioactive, this giant jelly bean of a figure. So much fun. And like, yeah, he doesn't come with any particular accessories or extra parts or anything. I think he was part of a three pack. He was a three pack, wasn't he? Help me out here. But yeah, just look at the mean face as well. And you can see they went for some darker green around the eyes, to kind of bring it out and make it more expressive. But more to the point, look at the sunlight pouring through here. How cool is that? Talk about your retro villains. This guy is so, so great. And comic book wise, he kind of becomes a hero later. But I absolutely love the big campy boots, the old fashioned sort of tunic kind of costume. And then the giant radiation coming out of this guy. Absolutely fantastic. And one of my favorite, favorite additions to my Avengers villain shelf. Number 26. Now the retro armored Daredevil, a modern figure, a very recent one, and so much that they've done with this. This is one of those figures, one of these characters where I thought, they didn't have to go this hard, but they did, and we're grateful. 
First of all, just the metallic red on the black looks so cool with the silver armor there. This was a design in the comics that was much maligned when it came out, but honestly, I really, really like it. Then you've got the alternate Matt Murdock head as well. He has the, the civilian head with the glasses, which looks great. But of course, I'm gonna be displaying him as his proper armored daredevil form with the nice clean lines on the DD logo there and just the extra shoulder kind of protection armor. It's like nothing kind of groundbreaking, but I just think it works so, so well. I'm a huge, huge fan of this daredevil. Amazingly, also like just, just, just these, just this, this design. It just looks cool with the um, extra bits on the back of the head as well. I so dig it. I don't actually have a classic red daredevil, but my goodness, this guy fills that spot easily until I do. Number 25. Maybe an unexpected one. We have Nuke. And Nuke is a character I'm not overly familiar with. I've read a few appearances, but this figure just has everything. You've got the basic sort of body design, which actually I think a lot of people don't like this Hyperion buck, but he's big and bad looking. But then you've got the great flak jacket on here with the removable knife. I think it's removable. Yeah, it is. It's just a little bit stuck in there, but you can remove it. He's got all the sculpted on pouches and pockets. The belt is a separate piece as well. He's got the strap around here. So much going on. I put the comedian gun in his hand because it looks a little bit meaner. But also also, what I particularly love about this figure is that you've got the changeable heads as well. I've got the USA flag on here with that crazy expression. Just looks so like just psychotically mad. But then you've got the awesome Terminator design with the flesh ripped away and the metal skull underneath. I, I'm always torn over which one to have on here, but I like to go for the more colorful stars and stripes. But this guy just has so much going on for him with the grenades in the pockets as well. I bought a second nuke so that I could put the flat jacket onto crossbones because originally I was going to put crossbones on this list and then I remembered, oh no wait, that's not actually his jacket. It's Nuke's jacket and Nuke definitely ranks highly on this list. Number 24. Is this the definitive Punisher? Well, it's hard to say because we have quite a few, but with a little bit of kit bashing aside, I don't think this is the right head, but we have the Walgreens Punisher. So yeah, the weapons, <laughs> the head, this isn't the best example of the Walgreens Punisher, but I will say what does separate the Walgreens Punisher into the more sort of elite kind of category is the fact that it takes the beautiful, clean Punisher design of just black and white, but then it makes it more interesting by coloring the belt around here and giving him his shoulder straps with the guns in there too. And let's face it, a one man walking arsenal needs to have these extra you know, areas to keep his uh, his artillery. So I always thought that the original Punisher design where the, the pockets were all white, so like it's bright and bold and classic, but it looks a little too kind of cartoony. Whereas this takes that slightly cartoony design, which of course it's cartoony, they're comic books, but then it just real worlds it just enough with the brown on here, the camo green on here, just sort of mixing it up and making it more of a, a gritty version of the classic, dare I say, slightly campy costume. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this head with the red bandana and the stubble is from the retro carded Punisher, which is beautiful. And then these accessories, the gun and the baseball bat, are from the Riders Punisher, who we might be seeing later. But just these things, these elements combined, notwithstanding the kit bash, but just the Walgreens additions, I think make for a fantastic Punisher. Number 23. And now the savior of the spaceways, the Silver Centurion or whatever you call him, the Fallen Silver Surfer. Is he officially called the Fallen Silver Surfer? Because if you read the comic where this he appears like this, he's not fallen, he's not like evil or anything. He's just like this, he's got this different look. He's set like millennia in the future. Either way, I'm gonna digress into storytelling here, but this figure I think is just really striking, you know? There's not too much special about him, to be honest. I still don't have the classic Silver Surfer, which is a big omission from my collection. Hopefully we'll get a re-release soon. But this 
dark sort of chrome kind of color. So beautiful. Then with the purple sort of power effect, the purple with the chrome just is gorgeous, offset so beautifully. And further to the fact that he is in no way fallen, he's carrying Mjolnir as well. So it looks like a funny sort of unusual kind of kit bash to throw all these things together. But for the story, it works really, really well. What this would benefit from is a, uh, a magnet in the feet and the surfboard to actually allow him to stick to it, that would be amazing. Don't think we're ever gonna get a silver surfer like that from Hasbro. <laughs> oh gosh, it's such a dusty board, excuse that. But a little bit of blue tack gets you the same result. And I think this works so, so great. I really, really dig this silver surfer. Number 22. Maybe a controversial choice, I have Death's Head 2. And just look, it's the size and the fact that it's a giant cyborg that just looks, not just a giant cyborg, a giant alien cyborg. Look at that face with the flesh ripped away, the teeth exposed, and then what looks like a kind of a psychotic ball skull type mask over the face. Throw in some kind of like scorpion type horn pincers and then predator style dreadlocks at the back. Completely bonkers, but so, so great. Then you've got, I love this kind of uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man fuse of bio-organics into the gun on, on his arm. Just so gruesome and 90s cyberpunk kind of design. I love this. And the huge big, again, so 90s, spikes on everything. Just makes him look so crazy. I would love more detail on here, but unfortunately, like that's the design of the character. I think he'd look great with like a cloth kind of cape sort of breaking this up. Maybe I can do a little kit bash sometime. But for what it is, I think this is great. And also, more to the point, this was not a bath. This was a single release figure and he's big and chunky. I think his only accessory was a different hand, but that's fine. I would have loved more accessories, but you know what? I will take this because this guy is just a standalone Hasbro going, hey, have a figure. I'm like, thank you, sir. May I have another? This gives you just in heft and weight, a lot of bang for your buck. Number 21. A fringe Avengers character, the Black Knight. I know you might have thought like, ah, oh, I wasn't gonna expect to see this guy on the list. But think about what you get with this guy. First of all, you have the Dread Knight body, which I really love with the sculpted scales. I think that's such, such nice detail and texture makes the character so much more interesting. Then you got, count them, three heads. And that counts for a heck of a lot. You've got this regular head. You've got the sort of the helmet, like full on Black Knight head and then you've got the black knight helmet with the wings as well my favorite is the one with the wings but i think i could be wrong but i think that that's the villain look so i want to go for the more avengers style here but yeah with this avengers head and i love the fact that yeah he can be you know you, got, you can obviously take the sword out and i actually really like having him in this kind of drawing pose and it's surprising that you can actually get the figure to bend and twist and just actually fit that really well so it looks like he's about to shh unsheathe his sword. Then you got the cape at the back, which looks nice and flowy and dynamic, the pockets and pouches. Black Knight is a real sleeper figure that I think deserves a lot more recognition. Number 20. And now we have a figure that I didn't think we were ever going to get, let alone as a builder figure, the Demo Goblin. And look at that face. That is a terrifying visage right there. They captured him so, so well with the flaming glider. And this is something that we would never get this as a normal figure because it's just too much work for a normal figure to throw in all the plastic with this new glider too. There's a lot of reuse of the original goblin body, the Dread Knight body with the arms and whatnot. But just look at the detail on like the belt buckle, the evil little face. Actually, you're holding this up to the camera. This is the most or the closest I've looked at this little belt buckle. That's really, really cool. He's got the strap going across his chest and just look at kind of the detail on his claws there. So evil and menacing looking. And then speaking of which, just look at that face. Isn't that a face only a mother could love? That is 
terrifying. So, so great. I don't think the pumpkin bomb is his, so he must lose a couple of points for not coming with a pumpkin bomb. I mean, how can you have a goblin without a pumpkin bomb? It's just, you know, not right. But still, the tattered cape at the back there, so much cool stuff. I really, really dig the Demo Goblin. Get ready. Number 19. Let's get classic now with classic Tony Stark. I mean, this is just absolute sort of staple Marvel. And this is an Iron Man body that we're going to be seeing a few times, uh, you know, not on this list, but just, you know, Hasbro have reused quite a lot. And rightly so, because this design captures so many eras and, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I was right the first time, eras of Iron Man. You've got stealth suits and centurions and all sorts of things, all based off of this kind of design here. And the fact that this figure came with an unmasked Tony Stark head, it came with a different Iron Man mask with the nose on there as well. He had the blast effects too. I've just got a little repulsor beam here. It had so much going for it. Part of the Marvel 80th anniversary figures. Oh boy, we got so many great figures from there. And here is just a quintessential Iron Man. I cannot wait for the 90s modular Iron Man to come out. But in the meantime, this guy to go with my like classic Avengers display, absolutely beautiful. You can see the way the gold and the chrome just shines there. It literally looks like I'm holding an iron figure. So great. Perfect, perfect Iron Man. Number 80. Call him Grey Hulk, call him first appearance, or maybe even Joe Fix It. This is a great, great use of the 80th Hulk figure. Now, I know that people can say, well, it's just 80th Hulk with a different head. But look at that head, look at that face. That is mean. He's got this wonderful kind of Frankenstein's monster kind of design with the, the big upper lip with the sunken eyes that make his face almost look like a skull and he just looks monstrous, so badass. And it's interesting that the shirt they use is orange because it works. Like if I was designing this character, I wouldn't have thought, well, we'll put an orange shirt on him. But my goodness, the gray with the orange is just terrific. I think it, it just pops for some reason. Throw in the pipe as well. So much fun and posability with this character. So I'm pretty sure that this is more your first appearance as opposed to Joe Fixit. So a suited version would be even better. But still, as a figure, I absolutely adore this. Right now I have him with Ghost Rider, Wolverine and Spider-Man as my mid-90s replacement Fantastic Four. And they look great together. And this figure on his own, absolutely terrific. Number 17. It's clobbering time. Yep, it is the Super Scroll Wave thing. What's that? Not the Walgreens thing? I know, I actually prefer this thing. Okay, why? I think it's because I like the brighter orange design. The other one I feel is a little, a little dark, a little, just not as much fun. This one with the lighter kind of what looks like almost a dry brush kind of effects to bring out the highlights, I think works great. I love his, 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 his moody, pouty kind of expression there with the blue eyes to capture Mama Grimm's baby boy. I like the Fantastic Four black and blue sort of design here. Very modern, but with the same kind of retro sort of feel. Cause just thing in pants, I always felt, ah, he's just a guy in pants. And it's a difficult thing to, a difficult thing, I don't know. But it's hard to know what the best kind of costume for the thing is. But I think this is a really good kind of compromise. I think this works well for the thing. Does he have open hands? No, that's a bit of a shame. We just have the fist, it's clobbering time kind of hands. But that works fine because it looks like he's about to stand his ground and step up to someone. And that's cool. So you know what? A lot of people prefer the original Walgreens one, but I will stamp my feet and stand my ground for the Super Scroll thing. Number 16. 
Carnage. Oh, me, me. Oh, I love this figure. Why? Because it's so Mark Bagley. A lot of people are going on about the new Carnage with all the sculpted lines and stuff. That's nice. But give me 90s bladed Mark Bagley face Carnage. 10 times out of nine, and I will take them. I love, love, love this figure. Plus, he comes with the different head, the Cletus Cassidy head, which I did a little kit bash with to make prison Cletus Cassidy. And this face just is so evil and maniacal. Absolutely brilliant. So when you talk about extras, you've got a completely different head that totally changes up the figure. Plus, you've got the huge, big sickle kind of blade here. I think this is, for me, this is still the definitive carnage with the huge, big claw hands, the tendrils like spewing out of the back. Ah, oh, I can't go on about this figure enough. Absolutely brilliant. Number 15. This next addition to the list was, of course, inevitable. The new deluxe Thanos. Look at this big, bold, beautiful guy. Oh my goodness. Okay, we always expect more from deluxe figures as well we should because they have a deluxe price tag, but we get our money's worth with this guy. Just look at big evil Grimace over here. His laughing, maniacal face. This is straight up, is it Jim Stalin? I'm gonna say Jim Stalin, Thanos. Just the classic Infinity Gauntlet. We've had a few Th Thanos, Thani, Thanoses, but this guy just nails that brilliant look. I can just imagine Captain America stepping up to him and the inf Infinity, no, Infinity Gauntlet with the beautiful bright colors. It, it does it like the Infinity washing up glove, but that's the way it was designed. So this perfectly captures that classic 90s Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity Crusade Thanos run. Plus, he's also got the old man Thanos, the King Thanos head as well. So if you've got the Builder figure or the Walgreens one, you can do a little bit of kit bashing, play around with that. I really love this guy. Again, with so many figures, it's the weight, the heft, the chunk that makes me think like, yeah, I got my money's worth. And with this Thanos, we absolutely got our money's worth. A real highlight of the last year. Number 40. And here's a big beefy boy with Toxin. Of course, there was gonna have to be a monster symbiote on this list. And I went for the biggest, gnarliest looking one. Okay, we also have Monster Venom from the Builder figure, and we have the Deluxe Venom. And I thought, I don't wanna put more than one on here, so I'm gonna go for Toxin, because they took what was originally on this buck and then just threw a whole bunch more stuff on it. Look at the wonderful kind of rosebush Audrey 2 type little mouths coming off here. This is such a gruesome character to design that I never would have thought we would have got a figure for. We had the one very disappointing figure from about 2015, 2016, and I thought, well, that's our one shot at Toxin. Oh no, there's more. <laughs> Now they just took that horrible, gross, like a walnut kind of textured head and just went full ham. They went so hard with this figure. And then they got the green tongue. And I love, I love the transition, the wonderful, beautiful fade of the red to the black. I think that looks so, so pretty on the arms as well. Then he's got his great clawed feet and eh, special claws, scary, scary stuff. Only thing lacking is some paint detail on these mouths, which one of these days I'm gonna sit down and add. But in the meantime, there's so much going for this big, badass, gruesome looking figure. I absolutely love this. Number 30. Want to see a cool looking figure in need of dusting? Well, here he is, the Cosmic Ghost Rider. Again, I'm doing deluxe and riders figures because I'm throwing everything into this list. And if anyone says, well, that's not fair, you're comparing deluxe figures to regular figures. Well, <laughs> get used to it, pal because this guy has to have an appearance on the list. Look at what's going on with this figure. It is a flaming skull in a bowl on a spiky 
heavy metal looking skull body with a galaxy pattern. Just so much fun stuff going on here. When they designed Cosmic Ghost Rider, I will absolutely concede. They simply went, what does everyone love? Well, they love the Punisher, they love uh, Ghost Rider with the skulls, and they love Deadpool and his wacky annoyingness. So let's just moosh these all together and see what we get. And we got the Cosmic Ghost Rider. And I, whoop, <laughs> I really, really love this figure. He's got two guns that he can carry there with the flame effects shooting out there. He also has the flaming chain as well. But of course, you've got to have one hand to actually control your space cycle bike. Otherwise, you know, it's going to crash into something. But yeah, I love the sort of electric effect inside the dome here. There's so much going on with this figure. And again, just look at that flaming skull inside there. So fun, so wacky, so absolutely bonkers and off the wall. Ah, I love this figure. Number 12. Perhaps a surprise to some, we have Silk from South Korea, the sort of sister type character to Peter Parker who got bitten by the same spider before it was squished or died of radiation poisoning or whatever the story currently is. But this was a fan choice uh, character. We could, have had, we could have had the white costume Electra, or we could have had, uh, was it Sith from, from Thor? Uh, that was difficult to get my T's and my S's out. But I have always loved this silk costume. I think the design of just the black, white, and red is really simple, really effective. Although having said that, I'm not a fan of like the S in the middle. I think it looks a bit kind of like a little bit slapdash. But then you have this great, reminds me of Mortal Kombat, kind of a Melina Kitana ninja kind of look here. But the fact that you is you don't have to have this face either. You have the fully unmasked face, which I think is the Psylocke face they used. I'm not entirely sure though. But also they throw in the bandana as well. So it looks like she's pulled that mask down and it's around her neck, which works so, so well. You've got the great, whoosh, the splaying out webbing there so she can have a really dynamic looking kind of pose. And then you've got a little bit of dry brushing, a little bit of extra kind of color in the hair, slightly bluey kind of look that just makes it a little bit more dynamic, a bit more interesting. And yeah, I really, really dig Silk. And little co comic touches like the extra bit of white on, on, on the shoes that just make the whole thing more interesting and dynamic. I'm so glad the fans voted for this. I know I did and I'm very happy to have her. Number 11. Another deluxe figure here with Black Widow. And this is one that is just a big bang of 90s. I think if anyone sees this figure, the first thing they'll think of is the Uncanny X-Men cover with Black Widow, Captain America, and brown costume Wolverine all standing in a hero pose. At least that's what I always think of. But yeah, this figure, she comes with so much. And again, I feel like it's just such a wonderful recreation of a comic book design. They've got the jacket, they've got the shield jetpack on there, which is always great. You know, Black Widow, as skilled a fighter and spy as she is, she is just a human being. So it's good to give her some extra, you know, a, a leg up. So the jetpack works great. I love the smoke effects rising from the wrist blasters. That's so, so cool. I totally dig that. And then you've got her actually firing from there as well. Really great. She has the soccer mom haircut, <laughs> which I think actually works so good for her, especially with the hair just coming down over her eye as well. And then you've actually got really nice kind of painting on the hair where it's this red with the black wash over there to bring out texture and detail. Like I say so many times, it's really difficult to get female faces that don't look like mannequins. This one just has a great determined kind of focused, professional, badass look. And you can see even, I never even noticed, I knew she had the Black Widow spider on there, but you actually have the tiny red Black Widow logo on there. Until I looked at this through the phone, which is like a microscope now, I never noticed that. That is just a great extra touch there too. So throw on the belt around her waist as well. This figure has so much going for it. Number 10. 
And now the star-spangled man with the plan, the Sentinel of Liberty, Captain America, again going back to the 80th anniversary designs, but why the heck not? I can't believe when I first started collecting Marvel Legends that I almost passed on these 80th designs. I was like, nah, I only need Spider-Man characters. What were you thinking, Dave? These are beautiful. So of course, like what I love most about this is the wonderful detailed sculpting on the fish scale type armor. I think that works so, so beautifully. He has two heads, although the, 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 the two heads kind of suffer the same problem that a few figures do where I think they're too similar. It's actually really hard to differentiate the two heads, I think. But still, this, this stoic, like, determined, ready to spring into action and inspire people look of Captain America, it works great. He's got the basic shield there as well, but I just think this is such an iconic, wonderful design. Now, of course, I kitbashed the straps, the shoulder straps from the Cap Wolf on here. And look, I know what you're thinking. Ian, if he's holding the shield, then he shouldn't have the straps on his shoulders because they're on the back of the shield. And to that I say, Shut up, because there is plenty of examples of Cap having these straps on there to to support a magnet on the back of, of, of his uh, gear. So actually the shields just kudunk, clips on with a magnet rather than being strapped. So these straps hold the shield magnet that he then attaches it to. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it and I'll fight you in the comments if I have to. But we won't because Captain America inspires us to be our best selves and therefore we will simply agree to disagree. I don't agree to that. Number nine. And essential for the list, of course, is retro Doctor Doom. This guy is the Beyonce of action figures because everyone else has to bow down, bitches. Look at this guy. Now, just what have they not done? They've done everything. Especially, this is really rare for me. They gave him a cloth, a cloth tunic bit. And you know what? I actually like it. And I never like cloth accessories, but this little bit of extra detail, the change in texture, I think is so effective. This is just a figure you can tell has had the love poured into it. They took the Super Scroll Doom and then just brightened him up. And I love the brightness. I love the retro sort of look. He's got his little jetpack boosters on the back there as well, which of course he comes with the, the rockets that can come out of there. So you can kind of take this cape off and turn him into a doom box, which is terrific. He's got, again, like the original, the D insignia on there with the removable gun. And of course you can actually see the nice kind of leather effect on there as well. So much has been poured into this figure, which is great with the doom uh, face there, looking all scary and whatnot, and the lovely gold on the buckle. He's got two books, which, uh, you know, there's, they're either science books if it's the beast or magic books if it's anyone else. So here he has the cool kind of, it's got the Sanctum Sanctorum design on there. So he's clearly half inched that from Doctor Strange. He's got the beautiful translucent magic effects. Oh my goodness. Along with the armor and the straps on there. So much to love about this fantastic retro doom. Number eight. Another one of my all time favorites, the retro carded Scarlet Spider. The original Scarlet Spider was one of the first figures that I got and then finally I got this retro version with the beautiful blonde Ben Riley head, which we might be seeing later. And this just, it, it just pops. It brings out all the best things from the original Scarlet Spider and then just enhances them. It took away the black lines around the eyes, which I always had a bit of a problem with because that's not really sort of true to the design so I much prefer just the white on red. And what red it is, rather than a flat red, we've got this beautiful, slightly shiny, metallic kind of red, and I think that works so, so well. Then we've got the beautiful extra detail on the pockets and pouches. They actually bothered, which is not always a guarantee, they bothered to put the little bits of silver on there, on the on the, uh, the poppers and the buckles. Then of course, you've got the same amount of detail on the spider light there and the web cartridges around here. A Little bit of paint running, running over there, but that's okay. 
Then they changed up his uh, wrist, wrist, blah, 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 his wrist shooters as well. So we got these more cylindrical designs. I love web shooters on the outside. They break up the costume and just make it look more interesting. Then just the great Scarlet Spider hoodie look. It's great that it was originally considered a terrible design in the comics. And now it's kind of been adopted as like a huge kind of nostalgic cult favorite. Absolutely love this figure. So beautiful. Number seven. <laughs> of course, how could we possibly have a top 50 without the 80th anniversary Hulk? Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. We went for such a long time without a update of the comic book Hulk. And then when we finally got him, Oh me mia, they went ham. They went so hard with this figure and he is great. And they knew it too, so they were happy to reuse the body, but I think we were all happy for them to reuse the body a few times because this is just phenomenal. Actually, I, I say, I, I was implying like this is the first time they've used it. I think it was a San Diego Hulk that had this and then they released this one. But let's face it, this is the version of the Hulk that this body was made for. Look at the detailing on the face. This is classic 70s Hulk with the hair and just, it's, it, it's Bill Bixby Hulk. It's just everything that we kind of grew up with or just us old folks grew up with. But yeah, I love this. I love the soft rubber material for the shirt. This works so, so well. You can pop it off and have him without, but I think that the shoulder joints look like a little bit sort of separate from the figure, which is where this shirt just hides that little sin there so perfectly. Now, there's not a huge amount of accessories. You just have the one Hulk face, but you have the different hands. You have the fist hands as well, but I love this kind of like grabbing rah, kind of look. Then you've got the brilliant sculpting of the pants tearing over the legs there. The great sort of, and again, it, this, the plastic feels slightly softer on where it's torn around his, his, his ankles and his calves. It's just a great figure with a bit of the lighter dry brushing on there too. And then all the veins in the forearms, like this guy's just gonna pop out of his skin. Such an amazing figure. When you talk about figures that are like centerpieces, to collections, this guy right here is an absolute centerpiece. Number six. Another deluxe Riders figure. It is the Riders Punisher with his bike. And just when you talk about a grizzled old Frank Castle, look at the detailing on here. I love the bright blue eyes and then the juxtaposition of those with the gnarly kind of stitches and bandages in his face. This is a guy who has come from a brutal looking bar fight and is just so badass. Plus what I really love about this set is the weapons. I've distributed many of them to other characters because they look so great. Look at this, just a sawn off shotgun. That's as Punisher as it gets. And then a damn machete. You know that someone's gonna be suffering at the hands of this guy. Then you got like all the magazines and clips and details on his costume. Just so much work has gone into this figure along with another head as well. And the rarity of rarities, a helmet that fits nicely on there without compromising how the head actually looks. And then I, I love that also, this is an old looking Punisher. He's got the widow's peak hair receding back there. Believe me, I know what that looks like. And then of course we have the bike itself, which has been used plenty of times in the past, but they give some nice little additions. Like we've got the license plate there, Punisher 616, New York City. We have the actual Punisher skull logo in here. No kayfabe reason as to why the bike would have a Punisher skull logo, but it's really fun for the action figure. So these two together as a pair just look phenomenal. Really, really great and absolutely deserving of a high place on the list. Number five. Come on, how can we not have Modoc, probably the most modern figure on this list. And like, just come on, this is a game changer to an, <laughs> it's a money changer. Because again, this kind of broke a new price point for a single deluxe kind of figure. But I mean, just look at him, look at him. And this is just one of the faces. You can hear the, the rattle of the other face inside. I like the more kind of animated sort of look here with the mouth open and the teeth and look at the paintwork 
Like his, his tongue is like glistens, like it, like it's a wet tongue in there. Ugh, so gross. But yeah, I adore this guy. So much just heft and weight straight out of the comics. The blast effect there that's just like bright and colorful. Again, a few pieces I've listed on this uh, as, you know, centerpiece, showcase pieces. This is a showcase piece. Also, just like the, 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 the dry brushing or whatever you call it that brings out the different colors in the skin tone. So it makes it so much kind of deeper and dynamic. There's just a huge amount to love about this figure. I was really on the shelf about getting him because I don't have a huge amount of like affection for the character of Modok, but I just felt like this is a this is a special figure and it was and it is. So yeah, I am so happy to have this guy. And now we've got the Modok series that people seem to be enjoying. Oh, I'm kind of on the fence about it, but he seems like a character that's going to be getting a lot of love over the next few years. So I think it's an absolute essential to have him in the collection. Number four. And now we got Venom Pool. Just, I mean, where the hell did this character come from? And who at Hasbro went, you know what? Let's do a Venom Pool builder figure, but God bless the person who did, because this thing is just monkey nuts bonkers insane, but so incredible. Usually I would hate this because it's not 616, it's not even MCU, I'm like, stop giving us more lines to collect. But with this figure, I'm willing to allow it, because just look at this guy. First of all, look at the texture on the red. It looks like he's literally made out of Kevlar. It's so beautifully done and put together. A lot of love has gone into this figure, you can tell. Look at the awesome Venom Pool face with the gnashing teeth and the bright purple tongue. And I love the Frankenstein's monster kind of stitching. Like this really is a monster. I'm not overly familiar with the character because he is from the Marvel game, but I think he is kind of essentially that. He's, he's a mashup, whether it's from science or magic or something in the middle. It's kind of like Thor, you know, what you call magic, uh, we call science or vice versa. So that's kind of what Venom Pool is. And he's just great. So yeah, he's not actually, he's not, he's not Deadpool with the Venom symbiote. He's something completely, he is an amalgamation of the two things. So yeah, he's got his huge big katana as well. And I do love that you can articulate his, his hand and arm so it looks like he's reaching for the other one. There's so much you can do with this figure. I love how ridiculously cartoony it is with the huge top heavy upper half and then the smaller legs, which just make him look like he's jumping out of a comic book. Absolutely phenomenal. I don't want... Any other Game of Earth figures, thank you very much. <laughs> but I will happily, happily take this guy. I'll throw him in with my kind of Planet of the Symbiotes kind of characters and just absolutely, again, like so many others on this list, a real centerpiece type character for any collection. Number three. Big gun, call him the big gun, but call him Deluxe War Machine. Oh. Oh, ho, ho. we are in the big leagues now. This is flavor country. Look at this guy. The deluxe figures, they, oh, you can see where the extra money goes, can't you? This dude is incredible. I just think that, you know, when we, when we saw him, we thought, ooh, we're going to have to get a modular Iron Man. And we did. But what a way to kick this style of 90s awesomeness off. Look at everything happening here. You've got, I just love all the different effects. You, you've got like the Gatling gun with the and you've got the pew, 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 pew. And then oh, I just love the missiles with the kind of like, I just, oh, the, I can hear this figure. You know, sometimes you can hear a figure. I can hear this. I love the twisty, windy kind of effects. Of, Cause you, you, you picture them, you've seen them. I always think of Galvatron's missiles that he fires and transforms the movie from his spaceship where they, they, they arc and twist and wind. That's what these are doing and it looks so great. His boot jets are falling off here, but that's okay. Because everything with this figure, the fact that also with these shoulder guns, you can actually move them back and forward so you can angle them however you want. That is so, so great. This guy is straight out of Marvel versus Capcom as well. So if you want to create like a Marvel versus Capcom fighting display, ah, 
you got to have War Machine. Not only that, but also he has the unmasked roadie head as well, which, again, giving me extra heads, unmasked features, so, so great. I absolutely adore this guy, as well should everybody, because just look how great he looks up close as well if you just kind of ignore the dust. But yeah, I just think this figure is the bee's knees. Absolutely wonderful. Going to go very, very high on the list. Number two. Now a character that could easily be number one. My favorite comic book character of all time, the sensational Spider-Man, Ben Riley. A little bit of kit bashing going on here with the blonde head from the vintage retro carded Scarlet Spider. But what a beautiful figure. I love this Spider-Man costume design. I <laughs> wish we saw it more. The big huge spider on there the clean lines and design i love the different colored fingers on the gloves the half boots it's just a great combination i've got the spare retro spidey head there that he's kind of holding like he's holding a mask i'm kind of recreating a comic book pose here but this is just a first of all great figure because it's the pizza spider-man mold we're all familiar with that it's a great example of how to capture the kind of physique and form of Spider-Man. It works so, so well. But the thing with this figure is it, of course, has more potential because, of course, I have to. I mean, come on. We have the spider carnage head and hands as well. So you get two figures for the price of one with this one. And Spider Carnage is such a great addition. Yeah, there could be some extra tendrils coming off the legs, but then you're starting to talk about a completely different figure. For a little kit bash that you can do, throwing in the extra hands and the great Mark Bagley looking Carnage face, absolutely wonderful. This is just, oh my goodness, I adore this figure. All right, guys, that was numbers 50 to number two, but of course we gotta have some honorable mentions. And now if you're talking accessories, it has to be the Juggernaut Wave Deadpool. Talking about a modern kind of Deadpool, not that we were talking about a modern Deadpool, but we are now. And here he is with everything, all of the accoutrements that you could possibly want for this figure with the removable samurai sword. You can pose him in so many ways. The removable guns that come out of the holsters, grenades on the side, guns, knives, sharp sticks, bad language. He has a boxing glove on the front here, but I removed that because that verges too much into the wacky territory, which I'm not a fan of. But also you see the face has that wonderfully slightly expressive, quirky kind of look. You can see the eyes are a little bit mismatched. He's got the wrinkles in the brow just to give that sort of deadpool -y kind of look. And then I even love his little pinky finger up there because he's going to be firing off his machine gun, but he's going to be doing it like a classy kind of guy. So this is such a fun and the, oh, also look, look, <laughs> I almost forgot. I love the buckles on there and, and the shin guards. They really went the extra mile to capture all the different details of the modern Deadpool design. I think this figure is great. Big and chunky now, we have ourselves Ares, the God of War. And this is based off of the bath design. I think it might just be completely identical. So uh, yeah, before I go too far into the weeds, it, this is just the bath but slightly recolored and rejigged just a little bit for a single release. And that's the thing, this is a single release. Look at the size of this guy. Hasbro hate doing that. They love to reuse the bucky cap, but instead we got this huge, big, heavy, chunky figure and there's so much going on. You've got the broadsword with the slightly bent handle. You've got the battle ax. You've got the knife in the side here, which can also come out as well. Then you have the rarest of rarities, a removable helmet with a face that ooh, actually looks a little bit derpy. <laughs> I was gonna say, a, a face that isn't compromised because the helmet is on there. Does the head look a little small? Yeah, maybe it does, but still, as far as heads with removable helmets go, I think that this is one of the best examples. It fits on there really well. I guess because of the Spartan design, the face is kind of lost behind there, so you can't tell if it looks a bit odd or not. I think though, with the helmet on, because why on earth would you not display it with the helmet on? This guy looks absolutely badass. 
throw him into your Dark Avengers display and you have got a wicked looking figure. I love the, the Roman trim on there on with the decorative kind of helmet. It just looks so, so cool. A really kind of, not underrated, but they're just not talked about figure very much. But I think this Ares is absolutely brilliant. You can call me Sinister. Now, this is a character that I was thinking, oh, do I include him or not? Because he doesn't really have many extras. But does he need them? Because what we get here is so, so good. The bright, evil, smiling, sinister face there. So expressive. And then, of course, all of this going on on the back. It's such a funny design for his cape from the comics. It's like, how do you recreate it? Well, they've done a pretty good job here. He's not the most kind of articulate type posing sort of character because this does kind of you know hinder that a bit but really all you need is for him to be looking sort of stoic and static and just evil like he's co concocting you know what his next awful scheme is going to be involving the summer's bloodline i think it works so so well then you've just got the nice kind of sculpting the way that the cape goes into his ridiculous ornate hood around here the way that his thigh high boots come up and connect to the smaller ones it's just little bits like this and then of course metallic paint job that i just love regardless so mr sinister ah great great figure Zapping his way onto the list, we have the bright pink living laser. And come on, if you know me, you know why this guy is on here. Just look at how bright and colorful this is. It's, it's insane. We got the sun shining through that brings out the popping kind of purple. That was terrible. Popping purple. There you go, that's better. And I just adore just the, the, the basic design because it, it is basic it's got a little kind of logo on there and then the really wacky looking helmet head design which is so unique and unusual that it just it just stands out you can put him on a flight stand and he just jumps out from any display then you've got the laser electricity lightning kind of effects look i'll be the first to admit this is a basic figure it's just the kind of is it sunfire i always get these wrong i think it's a Sunfire repaint, but then what a repaint with this bright pink plastic it's been made out of. The fun, wacky head with the nice metallic paint job on the front. I really, really dig this guy. Living Laser, I have no problem fighting for a place on the list, especially with the nice kind of uh, airbrush kind of look of the white on the back there. Like it's kind of heat and glowing. Really cool figure. Same with the white on the front as well. I, ah, I dig this guy the most. One that might be unexpected is the Silver Samurai. Now, one of Logan's sort of arch nemesis type frenemy sort of characters. This is one that isn't a huge sort of, you know, like A-list player, but despite that, they seem to put so much effort into making his armor look so good with the beautiful kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, but the, the strings there, the rope that ties it all together. Clearly, they didn't just fudge this one out. They took a close look at samurai armor and thought, okay, how do we actually do this justice? And they really did with the lovely rivets and the bolts and everything that goes into putting this together. They went the extra mile on a character that they could have maybe been a little bit cheeky with, but they're using tons of stuff that they really probably couldn't reuse on other characters. So they went all in with Silver Samurai and it really shows. Would he look good with another head? Yeah, I would have liked a more interesting expression. But then again, he is a samurai. So he's supposed to be kind of stoic. So I will, <laughs> I will allow that. But still, I think he's really great. The paint job isn't too exciting, but then again, he is the silver samurai. So there's not much you can do. But still, what we have got here, I think is tremendous. Number one. And here he is, folks. The figure that started this channel, Ghost Rider. Oh my goodness, still atop the heap. What can be said about this figure that I haven't said already? So much going on with this. The bike is terrific. I'll put them down and go like sort of one at a time. 
Ghost Rider himself in the classic sort of 70s look there with the flames licking up beneath his, his uh, sort of uh, jacket collar there. You can see the faint outline of his kind of uh, spine going up to the skeleton face, the skull face, and how awesome is that? With the dark brown wash, the articulated jaw as well, the flames going from the yellow to the dark orange, it just looks awesome. The chain as well, the fact that it's the metal that tr sort of goes into the translucent orange, so beautiful. Talk about a you know a centerpiece for a display. This absolutely nails those qualities. Perhaps you might not be able to see, but he does have dots of red in the eyes. Just about you can make out for the penance stare. Just everything that I would want from this kind of Ghost Rider figure. Then you throw in with that the awesome bike, which of course you can remove the flames if you want to, because the bike, it, it's slightly customizable. Uh, it also has a shield on the front, kind of a classic Ghost Rider monstrous kind of skull front, but I actually like the more the more classic, the more classic motorbike sort of look. But with the with, with the wheels, <laughs> with the translucent wheels, the flames coming out of the back with the exhaust, this thing is just so, so awesome. I would like maybe a bit more wash detail on here to bring out kind of more of like a, you know, a oily engine sort of look, but I will take it for what it is because what it is is still so, so great. So the bike, I'll lie that down there. The bike along with this classic old Ghost Rider, absolutely easily a fantastic Marvel legend. And there you have it guys, my number one Hasbro Marvel legend. Is it technically the best figure in the world? I don't know, who's to say? But it, with a special place in my heart, being the first figure that prompted me to start making videos, it's gotta be Ghost Rider. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that. It was kind of epic. But if you did, then please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. But more importantly, go over to Super Sorrel, check out his YouTube channel and check out his top 50 Marvel Legends and then come back here and probably his channel as well because we'll share the video. We will do a live stream event where he brings his 50, I bring mine and we combine them and we take out all the chaff until we just have the exclusive top 50 countdown. Who's number one is gonna be number one because of course there can be only one. So folks, thanks for joining me. I hope to see you in the next episode. And until next time, keep displaying moral behavior.